The main aim of documentaries is to persuade the audience to the writer's way of thinking and also inform them of facts they may not have previously known. The key concepts of representation and mediation of the subject of the film are useful areas for delivering the argument in order to persuade. Many modern day documentaries are known as infotainment documentaries, which aim not only to entertain, but also offer factual information to give the case, argument or solution in a manner of realism. In 2003, Mike Edwards suggested that we make modality judgments about documentaries. How are they realistic? How are they typical? And how are they shocking of real life? Hermeneutic suspicion is a theory involving questions about the meaning of appearance, posed by Richard Dyer in the year of 1993. His questions are written about all media texts generally, but these questions have a specific significance to documentary a text representing reality. His four questions were, what sense of the world does it make? What does it imply is typical of the world and what is deviant? Who is speaking? For whom? To whom? And what does it represent to us and why? How do we respond to this representation that's been delivered in the documentary? A second Mike Edwards theory again in 2003 is the truthfulness of a documentary. Have the events within the film been manipulated in any way to deliver a particular idea, as documentaries often present an idea through its structure and organisation based on the writer's point of view, also known as reportage. Michael Rabager, who founded the Documentary Centre at Columbia College in America, delivered this list of criteria that a documentary must fulfil in the year of 1998. He said that a documentary must tell a good story, cannot be value neutral, must aim to convey a personal critical perspective on some aspects of the human condition, must have interesting characters who are trying to achieve something, must include contextual information, although there shouldn't be too much and it shouldn't be too early on in the documentary. It must also contain dramatic suspense via situations that intrigue the audience and make them judge and anticipate what's going to happen next. He also said that they must develop the audience's knowledge of at least one situation or character. And finally, that there should be a confrontation between opposing forces which reaches a climax and is then resolved. It could be said that Michael Rebiger's theory is similar to that of Tetz van Todorov, who in 1977 said that all narratives contain the basic structure of equilibrium, disruption, and ends in a resolution and therefore new equilibrium. Narrators are often found in documentaries more so than any other visual text. In most modern day cases, the narrator is positioned behind the camera, in a voice of God style, in a method of anchorage, a theory by Roland Barthes. As the narrator is the, known as the guarantor of authority, well-known actors or experts in the field are selected to narrate the documentaries to deliver a truthful, highly respected and knowledgeable report. For example, think about Sir David Attenborough on life. As a highly respected naturalist, his narrations are believed to be trustworthy and information packed. In terms of filming, documentaries take on mostly handheld camera work, using zooms, shakes and pans to endorse a particular point of view and provide documentaries with a sense of realism, helping the audience to believe that they are an eyewitness to the event in the text. This technique is known as cinema verite, a technique established in the 1950s used to follow a person to capture instant, spontaneous reactions. In modern day terms, you could call it a fly on the wall style. Locations are an essential part of the mise en scène element of documentaries. The reconstruction or staging of events in real locations where the topic took place can enhance the report dramatically as it supports the investigative reportage of the text the pre-production research. In documentaries, it is mostly continuity editing used in the piece, such as cuts which are invisible to the typical eye. Some documentaries will also include non-continuity montage sequences with non-diegetic music, as well as reconstructions, open and closed narratives and multi-strand plots to make the topic appear interesting and strange.
Dr. G. He and Dr. Stremelong leave the real medic standing. What? <laughs> Ooh! Have you, you haven't eaten it, have you? Seven-year-old Chloe has liver disease. She spent the first two years of her life in hospital and has been in and out. ...about keeping an eye out for potential hazards. But he should be, because with each dangerous corner, he's narrowly missed something that could bring his run to a crashing stop. <laughs> I think everyone's excited to meet you. <laughs> Have you ever ridden a horse before? Not really, not properly. Because it has no I relation to what we're nice doing to today. You. Nice to meet you. In response to today's news of the outbreak of hostilities between vessels of the United States and Soviet navies, a special session of Parliament has this evening passed an Emergency Powers Act. Hello, I'm Jeremy Vine. It's 8.30 and this is Panorama. Together but separate, the town where people are turning... For those subsidies you have voted towards the war. A war in your defence. The house may be unfinished, but as time heals the wounds, does it offer the chance of a fresh start? David, we wrapped um, because we'd finished with him, we shot all his stuff, um, and he goes off to his trailer to change. Um, of uh, fact. Of course, I can't remember a time when I wasn't aware of Darwin, to be honest. I know because it's written in my copy of the Origin. Michael Palin's New Europe is, I think, if I count right, the seventh travel series I've done for the BBC. And it's going to be Right, I'm now changed into this nice 